it's alive! Sorry, not alive. It's alive. Don't say it. This is alive, right? It's alive! That's not alive. Seriously? Mm, great. It's, it's alive. Ah, uh, no. You've got to be kidding me. How do we know if this or this or this is living? What is this? Scientists use certain characteristics to classify something as a living thing. Science is all about discovering and observing the world around us, and not all of that world has even been discovered yet. So these may change in the future, but this is what we use right now. First things first, all living things are made of cells or they're organized. The cell theory states that all living things are made of cells. Now that can be one cell or unicellular, like an amoeba or bacteria, or many cells or multicellular, like a giant blue whale, a super cute chameleon, or majestic redwood trees. We are organized. Even unicellular organisms have different parts that do different specific functions. For all of us multicellular organisms, hello, hi, that's us, our cells are organized like this. Our body has cells. Those cells form tissues. Those tissues then form organs. Some organs form organ systems. Those organ systems then form us, the organism, the living thing. These are called the biological levels of organization. All these cells we've been talking about contain the instructions for the rest of all of the characteristics on our list in its DNA. If you have cells, then you have DNA. Number two, reproduce. Living organisms make more living organisms. Some make copies of themselves like unicellular bacteria, splitting, and then ta-da, an exact copy with the same DNA and traits. Cloning. They basically clone themselves. It's amazing. Or you can simply just call it boring asexual reproduction. I prefer cloning. I think we should just switch those out, but you need to know asexual reproduction. There you go. Or organisms can reproduce sexually with one male parent and one female parent that then pass on some of their DNA and traits to their offspring. Number three, grow and develop. Living organisms have a lifespan. Now that typical lifespan is different but for all living things, they will grow or mature and develop, and then eventually they'll die. Number four, need energy. If you are alive, then you have some way to capture energy and use energy for processes. Organisms are either autotrophs and produce their own food through the use of chemicals like plants using light, water, and carbon dioxide, or some organisms are heterotrophs, like us, where they get their energy from consuming or ingesting organic substances, like we do when we eat chicken nuggets, or a tortoise when it eats some lettuce. Number five, response to stimuli. There are all types of stimuli, both internal stimuli, like your brain and gut sending chemical signals to your brain when you're hungry, or external stimuli, like a deer hearing something in the clearing and then running away to safety. Plants even react to stimuli, like growing or leaning towards the sun. This is called phototrophism. Number six, maintain homeostasis. Maintaining a regular balance is so important for many biological processes to even happen. Each living organism has its own set of ideal conditions in which it functions best. Take something simple like temperature. If we get too hot, we do things to cool ourselves down, like drink some ice water or go find some shade. If we get too cold, the opposite is true. We put on a coat or we seek out a fire when we're camping. All cells have feedback systems to help with this regulation. Even single-celled organisms have the cell membrane to help with homeostasis. Number seven, evolve and adapt. This is the only characteristic on our list that happens over a long period of time and relates to an entire species 
not just an individual. This is like natural selection. Organisms that grow and develop well will be more successful than those who do not. Hmm. Now, there are some exceptions to these characteristics. Organisms like zonkeys, yeah, that's right, they exist. They're the offspring of zebra and a donkey. Mules and ligers cannot typically reproduce, but they are alive. Viruses can reproduce, although they need a host. But most scientists agree viruses are not alive. Crystals grow and develop, but are not alive. Keep in mind that a living thing needs to have all of these characteristics, not just some of them. If you want to learn more science, check out this video next.